Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times. We're here today to discuss some horror. So before I went on holidays, Netflix released a limited series that looked really promising and I really wanted to watch it before the holidays but I didn't find the time to and I really wanted to give it all my attention and that is the new limited series brand new cherry flavor. It's coffee time! This limited series dropped on Netflix on the 13th of August, which also was coincidentally a Friday the 13th. The series has a total of eight episodes and I binge them in one day. So I am here to let you know my spoiler-free thoughts on the show and whether or not you should give it a try. The show is a mix of a lot of different genres. Between them we find mystery, thriller, we have drama, and we have horror. The Netflix series based on Todd Grimson's book of the same name takes place in an early 90s Los Angeles bathed in equal layers of possibility and dread. A filmmaker heads to Hollywood in the early 90s to make her movie but tumbles down on a hallucinatory rabbit hole of sex, magic, revenge and kittens. This fresh, intense, surprising, surreal and grotesque movie is so interesting because it is based on the 90s but this feels like it is a movie that has a world of its own as if it will be an alternate reality to our own world where everything lives and exists in this alternate world and it just felt so real at the same time. This is a really bizarre but really well put together story with a strong cast and it's going to get weirder and weirder as we go. Lisa Nova comes to LA with one dream and one short. She just wants this short film that she has created called Lisa's Eye to be turned into a feature film and she wants to direct it herself. So she comes with a lot of big dreams. Anyone that watches this short is mesmerized by it and it catches the eye of a producer in Hollywood. Lou Burke flatters her and plans to develop the film into a full-length movie. However, her dreams are gonna turn sour and she's going to realize that the industry has a really darker side to it and she's going to end up looking for revenge and that seek, that quest for revenge is going to take her down a rabbit hole and she's probably gonna take things a little teeny tiny tad too far. Throughout the episodes there is this weird but really strong energy, something that makes this movie different from anything else you've seen before so it ends up being a lot more than just a movie based on LA and the film industry and that is why this limited series ended up being so unique. In this show nothing is as it seems and even though the show is going to make you believe that you have things figured out this is so unpredictable as unpredictable as its characters which was one of my favorite things of the show was the cast, the characters and the character arc, the story, the background for the different characters. Each of the different characters at the beginning might look simple at first glance. You might think that they are the stereotypical LA characters, the ones you would associate with the film industry. We have Lisa, she is this newcomer, this naive new writer slash director with a lot of hopes and dreams coming to LA. And then we also have the Hollywood producer that might want to take advantage of others if it means that he's going to succeed. Like all of these typical stereotypes and tropes from the industry but they just took them and gave them a twist and it was just great to see. The characters in the show are flawed. They're characters that do and say things completely unexpected, out of the blue, and they are such great characters. You don't know if they're good, if they're evil. They keep changing throughout the show and that's also why you as a viewer keep so engaged with the show and you keep binging the episodes as I did in one day. So they are nearly 
one hour long they are around 40 minutes i believe so i nearly watched like eight hours of a show in one day so it already tells you how addictive it is and i think part of it is because of the characters and because you want to know what they're going to do next because everything is just so unexpected katherine keener who plays the character of these older woman that is supposed to have some magical powers i think her character was for me one of the best things of the show her performance was just stunning she was so great and she's going to portray this character that is supposed to have the knowledge of many many years and the way that she portrays this character in a way that it's almost a motherly figure but at the same time is really scary um it just worked so well there is not much i can tell you about her character without spoiling it but like look out for her in the show she is for me one of the best performances the movie explores humanity it explores the things that are being influenced by hollywood by the film industry it also touches on the things that you are willing to sacrifice in order to achieve success um, it has so many different levels of depth and there's a lot of metaphors as well it's just such a surprising show um, and I feel like because the plot the story was so strong the messages that we're trying to get across worked so well I think that's why these is probably one of the best horror attempts from Netflix to do a limited series. The show is not only creative, but it's also giving us a really well thought through story. Even though the episodes were directed by different directors, I feel like at the end of the day, we got such a well put together story. And I think that's always something really good that a lot of times is forgotten in tv shows i feel like it's all about the action in that specific episode and they forget about the whole story and the whole plot kind of developing through all of the episodes and i think this show did such a good job with that this kind of blend between i would say fantasy and horror kind of gave us like room to play with a lot of different symbology and also a lot of images that were really disturbing um this show has had probably for me the most disturbing sex scene i've ever seen um not gonna go into specifics but it was extremely uncomfortable to watch i was like hell no <laughs> and trust me i have seen the sex scene of leatherface i thought there could be nothing grosser than that but here we are we found it that being said i would like to mention that this movie has really good blood and gore and also body horror um i would say the body horror really starts to take off around episode four um so if you're somebody that you know is not a fan of body horror this might not be for you because it really gets intense at some point one of those fantastical mystical aspects of this show is the magical vegetation that we get to see on some of the sets we see beautiful kind of greenhouse almost scenery and that goes to praise for the set design and the production and i have read that actually they got you know a lot of supply of greenery for the show and so everything that you see of most or most of everything that you're gonna see are real plants and they bring so much to the scenes there is something else that i need to talk about because if you know me um you know that i love cats <laughs> and there are cats in this show and there are also kittens in this show um and all i'm gonna tell you is that from the technical point of view i am extremely glad that they decided to go with animatronics that were used in this film because i do feel like cgi would not have worked as well and it was just so unique to see all of the scenes with the kittens and the cats and stuff so i'm not gonna go into specifics because it will be a spoiler but if you watch the show you know what i mean and i thought it was fantastic i absolutely loved every single one of those scenes <laughs> um so yeah props to them for that there is also so much like symbolism and 
imagery, like things that you could sit down and analyze. And there's something else that this movie is trying to bring across, which is the message of power and gender in the film industry. I would not say this movie is feminist per se, but I do like the way that they brought this topic up and the way that they explored it. Um, and I think that they did a good job. Now my final thoughts on this limited show. So first of all, this is really not going to be everybody's cup of tea because it's bizarre, it's weird, it's really unique. Um, and it's also not going to be for the weak of stomach. There is a lot of disturbing images. There is body gore. Um, and there is also, you know, some trigger warnings here for abuse, psychological and physical. And, you know, it's not going to be really a show for everybody. I also feel like it's fairly slow paced, even though a lot of things happen in every episode. But again, not a show for everybody. The movie managed in a way to bring across that sort of campy horror feeling to it. It never really took itself too seriously, even though we do address those meta questions about the film industry, the art and Hollywood and human nature, all of that. But it was still a lot of fun and it was light in a way, even though, trust me, this show is really really tough to watch at times. So I decided to give the limited series a 4 out of 5. I absolutely recommend it. I think anybody should give it a shot unless you're you know a little bit more sensitive when it comes to body horror or certain trigger warnings. I totally get that. That's not for everybody. But at least give it a, a chance. A lot of people have compared this show with the Cronenberg's works. Uh, so if that's something that you enjoy maybe you want to give it a try. Now there's been rumored that that there could be potentially a season two. There are some plot lines that have not been really fully explored and explained. So I could see that happening maybe in season two. I don't know if they're gonna do it or not. I don't think there is anything confirmed as of now, but honestly, I would not be against it. I don't know if it's going to follow uh, some of the same cast, if it's gonna be based in the 1990s or if they're gonna go a complete different route, a different year, but kind of exploring the same concepts. I don't know, but I would not be opposed to it because I really enjoyed these first season. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed the spoiler-free review. Let me know down below if you've checked the show, what you thought of it. Let's talk about it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, please give the video a big thumbs up and I hope to see you all in the next coffee time. Bye.